Hello everyone, this is Bob Brown with Community Coronavirus Update number 95. Today the themes are COVID numbers are still smoldering, uh, hiding the data of vaccines for 5 to 11 year olds and ways we could do better. Uh, so unfortunately numbers have not uh, continued to drop like we had hoped. Uh, looks like if anything numbers are starting to head back up again and kind of going along with that is hospitalizations here at Lee and Lincoln are, are headed back up again as well. Uh, both county residents, people from outside of Lincoln uh, are, are being more hospitalized. Uh, we're seeing the same numbers in, in the rest of the state, Douglas County, again, their numbers are as high as they've been for the last couple months here, so 200, about 200 hospitalizations, and hospital cash overall is about the highest it's ever been because all the delayed care that didn't get done here still need, is started needing to get done, and so there's only just so much capacity, which is proving to be a big problem for hospitals at this point. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Nebraska is not doing some of the right things it needs to do. We stopped uh, sharing data, and so if you go to the New York Times site, you'll see these disclaimers now saying Nebraska again stopped sharing data at the county level October 22nd. Uh, unfortunately, the governor has pretty much taken down the dash uh, yet again. Uh, unfortunately, I think he's uh, prematurely declaring victory and uh, rescinding what few directive health measures are left. Uh, and so we may be smoldering for a while uh, until we do something better, unfortunately, which we'll talk about a little bit at the end. Um, I don't know why we're hiding the data. I don't know, are we avoiding accountability? Or is there a misunderstanding of how pandemics work? Uh, are there problems with the data that, that's being covered up? Uh, I'm not sure what's going on, but it really is frustrating for those of us trying to work on this that the, the state is not sharing this kind of data like other states is doing. Uh, but unfortunately, but thankfully we do have enough local health departments putting out good data like this, whether it's in Omaha or Lincoln or, or some other folks, so we can draw enough from other sites to kind of know what's going on. Uh, there is some good news, however. I mean, one one is that you know thousands are getting their booster shots, so that uh, waning immunity that happened six months after your last shot, now people are able to get uh, boosters for uh, Johnson, Johnson, Moderna, and, and Pfizer. And of course, the biggest announcement yesterday was that five to eleven year olds are also now available for uh, eligible for Pfizer. And locally, they'll be available at a couple of different places: the health department, vaccine clinics at schools, pediatric and safety net clinics, and pharmacies. Uh, however, be a little patient. Uh, and so locally, uh, Dr. Sean John Jobs was on a news conference today pointing out, you know, it's going to be a few days. There's some uh, logistics that need to take place. And so uh, just because it was approved yesterday doesn't mean it's going to be available in hours. It's going to take a few days to get this uh, up and rolling. Uh, another good, as you know, many of you know, I like uh, Caitlin Gentilini's uh, post. Uh, she, again, she's also saying be patient with your pediatrician and pharmacy. Uh, and so if you want to walk through the logistics, why this takes a little time to get it off the ground, she kind of goes through some of the supply chain issues uh, that are involved. Uh, the good news this time is it's going to be available everywhere, not just at a mass clinic. It's going to be available where people trust most, which is at the regular doctor's office or pharmacy, because those are the people's first two choices. So thankfully that's going to be happening, plus uh, the access to the school, which is another uh, parent uh, preference. And so uh, so we're going to be give, delivering the vaccines in the places parents want them to be delivered, hopefully the most accessible, and hopefully we can get these uh, kids vaccinated as soon as possible, because this will help our numbers quite a bit. Uh, and again, you know, the, the, the data is getting better and better. And so one thing I'll point out, there's a study, a uh, follow-up, uh, some subgroup analysis. So yes, even in the in the group that has the highest risk for myocarditis, a young male adolescence, so they ran the numbers and, and published them, that yes, that's a little bit higher risk for myocarditis in that vaccine group, but it's still lower than the risk of actually having coronavirus. So even, uh, so yes, there is a risk to the vaccine, but the risk to the vaccine, even in the highest risk group is still higher. So getting COVID is worse than getting a vaccine at pretty much every level there. Uh, again, if you want to go through the data, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Caitlin Gentilino puts through a whole cliff notes and go ahead and read through so and it goes through in fine detail all the reasons, all the scenarios they ran. Uh, the evidence for help is, but, is, is that uh, this is better than not getting vaccinated, so go ahead and get your kid vaccinated. I would highly recommend that you go ahead and do this. Uh, the next, the, I'd like to finish though, just talking about our future direction. What's going on here and why aren't we getting better and is there a better way? Uh, and so I think I'll use two countries, United Kingdom versus Italy. So uh, we seem to be following the UK model, unfortunately. So the United Kingdom, you know, they had their first surge, they had the big alpha wave, uh, they had the big delta wave, and people thought, oh, it's going to be rapid up and rapid down. But now, months later, still smoldering up and in shirt, and unfortunately, just about kind of where it was, even at this this high peak here. So they're not getting past this. And I think the problem is, is they, they backed off too much on their other public health measures. Vaccination alone... Um, may not help enough, but their vaccination rates just simply aren't high enough. But just like us, the United States, United Kingdom, Israel, we got off the off the off, out of the chute first, but we have, our vaccination rates have stalled, unfortunately. 
So uh, we're looking like our numbers, like here Lincoln versus Nebraska, even though across the country, are kind of looking like the UK model because we're kind of doing the same thing as them. So United Kingdom is very similar to U.S. Our, their vaccination rates stalled. Uh, they don't really have a comprehensive strategy, just like we don't. Uh, they returned to, quote, normal too soon, uh, sending people back to the restaurants and bars uh, with no masks on. And, there, you know, there's just no way that that's going to stop. Just because you're sitting at a restaurant walking in with a mask doesn't really make a big difference if everybody's sitting down for hours talking uh, and there's no capacity limits. Uh, and they didn't do a green pass, which others have done. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, our vaccination rates, unfortunately, have stalled. Uh, Nebraska, 61% as a state. Uh, Lancaster County is a little better, but not that much better, actually. Um, and so what happened is, you know, uh, United States, United Kingdom, and Israel really got off the, off the uh, started fast, but almost all these other countries have passed us. Even Japan got a late start. They, they went uh, way past us. But I'll use Italy as another example because they're, they're, they've got two things going for them right in Italy. One, they're more vaccinated we, with we are. They've done a better job. One of the things that's helped them get vaccinated is the incentives that the Green Pass creates, plus the Green Pass uh, creates a safe environment for people. Uh, so if you look at Italy's numbers, yes, they had those surges kind of like we did. So this uh, line is the United States. Uh, our peak was actually worse than even their worst peak. Uh, so they started bad, but lately, in the last few months, they just haven't had near the issues that United States or United Kingdom way up have had. What did Italy do different that we could learn from? Well, our, their higher, one, like I mentioned, their higher vaccination rates in the U.S. and U.K., but the other big thing, I think, is the Green Pass. So to go to restaurants, bars, or events, you have to present your Green Pass. Uh, basically, and you can have three ways that this will work. You can be A, fully vaccinated, or B, have proof of an infection with the last three months, because if you've been infected, you will have some immunity. It just doesn't last long enough, and what we're finding is that it's, about, it's good for about six months, and then you start getting another surge again. So they're giving you set uh, some allowance for some protective immunity uh, but only for six months which is about right or if you need you have neither of those you can do a negative test in the last 48 hours and so you can go to a pharmacy in Italy and get a test and then that goes on your green pass and you've got that green check for the next two days and that's what allows you to go into a restaurant or bar or some other event and so it looks kind of like this uh, for us Americans that are in Italy uh, basically you can just show your American vaccine card they know what our vaccine card looks like and so we don't have the green pass because we're not connected but you can just pull out your vaccine card and they'll look at it uh, which is exactly why my wife and I were gone for a couple of weeks as we went to Italy uh, and we specifically Italy because they had all this in place I knew their numbers were good and of course we were able to combine the three things I like to do most which is bike travel and eat good food uh, and so we the reason I haven't been doing these updates for a couple of weeks is we went to Italy and did some biking it made for a very safe environment so the bike group we were with all of us had been were Americans who had been vaccinated and negative testing before we arrived uh, we didn't worry too much about masks because we knew we were all safe uh, I didn't worry much about going to an Italian restaurant because in every Italian restaurant you you can be uh, sure that every patron in that restaurant is not going to be infectious because they've been vaccinated or have had recently been infected and recovered or they'd had a negative test in the last 48 hours and to me that made things a lot safer and literally that's why we chose to go there uh, I think maybe some of our own restaurants locally might be able to learn from that uh, it reminds me a little bit of back in back in the days when smoking was still allowed in some restaurants some didn't allow smoking and of course we preferentially went to those restaurants that didn't allow smoking I would do the same I would professionally preferentially go to a restaurant that created some type of a safety system like this uh, so Italy uh, I like also though that they didn't have to do a vaccine mandate in Italy to get there so the reason we have to try to do a vaccine mandate is because we're not doing this and so I like the green pass because it gives us some freedom of choice you can choose to get vaccinated yes you can get some credit from having been recovered from an infection and you have some natural immunity that's probably good for three to six months so okay we'll give you credit for that or if none of those in place, well, then you should have a negative test in the, uh, in the last 48 hours. And it's at your cost because the vaccination is for free. If you choose not to avail yourself of that, that's on your dime. And so I think we should move to something like this. And they still use masks in common places where it's going to be harder to verify this stuff. And also there's when you've got a lot of people in a group, there's even none of these are going to be imperfect, meaning some people are vaccinated. Yes, oh, we'll have breakthroughs. Some people, even though it's within six, fun six months, sometimes you could get infected four to five months later and negative test for last 48 hours that may not be perfect so still in common places lots of people you still were required to wear masks in Italy and that's why their numbers are where they are um, I think this is the biggest policy failure in the United States and Nebraska and Lincoln because this could be implemented at any level it has been implemented in other states like Hawaii and some cities like New York where they are doing things like this so we could choose to do this uh, but I think we may smolder along it like this for potentially months on end until we do something different 
uh, we can just let that many people infected keep our hospitals overwhelmed, uh, have more deaths, or we could put something in place like a vaccine verification similar to this uh, for events, restaurants, and bars going forward this winter. Uh, without that, I think we're going to have to go with the vaccine mandates. Uh, I, I would rather do the other one, but if not, well, we'll have to do the vaccine mandates if we want to get past this uh, in, in a coordinated fashion. So could it be voluntary? So, I mean, one thing we could say was maybe not all restaurants don't have to do this, but they could choose to market uh, to people like me who would be more likely to go to their restaurants uh, this winter if they were to put something like this in place. Uh, that requires some infrastructure to be put in place. Uh, the University of Nebraska does have a safer community app that has achieved something like this, and there are lots of uh, entities working on this, but I think this is what, something that we need to start talking seriously about if our numbers don't start going down quickly. So hopefully this is helpful with you. I'll be back with another update next week. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, and then this is, again, this is what I do for a living, so you verify who I am, but disclaimer, these are my opinions, not those of uh, the entities I work for.